Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Education and asks, uh, by how much did students' reading and writing improve according to the 2008 evaluation of the literacy strategy outlined at the top of page 18 in the November 2008 briefing to the incoming Minister of Education? The Honourable Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker. I am advised that the briefing to the incoming Minister was referring to an evaluation of the Literacy Professional Development Project, which began in March 2004. The briefing states, quote, after taking into account expected growth and maturation, students' gain in reading and writing were twice those that could be expected without the intervention, end quote. But Right throughout the briefing, the point is consistently made that the system continues to underperform for a significant minority of students. Supplementary question. Order, order. I've called the Honourable Trevor Mallard. What did the dot point under the one the member has just directly quoted say? The Honourable Antony. Order. <laughs> it says schools accelerated the rate of progress for the majority of the at risk students by four times the expected rate. Mr. Speaker, underneath that, the Brimbling goes on to say challenges remain. Success for all students requires that every student acquire strong learning foundations in the early years and remain engaged in learning as they progress through schooling. This is not yet occurring for all students. This government knows Order. one in five Order. students were failing Order. in the system. Order. The member was asked, minister was asked a very, very simple question. I allowed her to go on some a period of time after answering it, but she's just gone a little too far. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. When a question is as specific as that, uh, can the Minister tell us what is uh, on the first dot point under some other lines and other such? And the Minister then chooses to read it out. Surely that is complying totally with it. Uh, for her to be required to read out only the bit that suits the member asking the question is inappropriate. Order. Order. She could, sir, simply Order. have chosen a table. Order. 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 The members asking questions choose their questions. And the Minister answering does not choose the question. Now, the, uh, the member asked a very simple question, and, and the minister went on beyond what the minister asked. And if the member, who's an experienced member, he's leader of the House, checks standing orders, he'll find that material beyond that necessary to answer the question shouldn't be included. And the minister answered the question and then went on. Now, I had no objection for going on for a while, but once she started going on to talk about what her government uh, was doing, it was well beyond the question, the question asked. Point of order, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith, and I urge him to read the standing orders before he challenges the Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, my, my point is that when a member has asked for a very specific item to be read out, it is the duty of a Minister to ensure that the public is given the proper context. And we can all take half quotes out of reports and create a particular impression. I think it is perfectly proper for a minister to ensure that the full context of order, such quotes order. is reflected in answers. I've heard sufficient from the, the Honourable Member. Now, answers are meant to be succinct, they're succinct to the question asked. And I allowed the minister to go on to put it in context. But once she started to go on to talk about what her, the wonderful things her government was doing, that was beyond the question asked. And I've got to be fair. You know, where, where ministers go on too long in answering, in including material beyond that which is asked. It is the members asking questions have the right to determine what is asked. Ministers don't have the right to say, well, I wish they'd asked that and give an answer in accordance with that. Uh, that is not the way it works. Point of order, the Honourable Anne Tolley. I'm sorry, Mr Speaker, but in fact I did not talk about the wonderful things that that's this government is doing. If I had done that, I would have referred to the national standards. What I talked about was the one in five children order, who were failing. Order. Now, I tell the member it would be wise for her to sit down. 
I will not be trifled with in this way. Supplementary point of order, the Honourable uh, Chris Hipkins. Point of order, Mr Speaker. A few moments ago you stood uh, while Jerry Brownlee was speaking, called him to order, and he continued to speak. That was order. exactly what Clayton Cosgrove order. did before and was asked to leave. The Speaker is the sole judge of these matters, and I do not take that kindly. The Honourable Trevor Mallard, I've called. Mr Speaker. Honourable Trevor when, Mallard. When will most students who were in year one in 2004 when this program was introduced sit NCA level two? The Honourable Anne Tully. When they're ready. Colin King, point of order, the Honourable Tim Miller, Speaker, point of order, the Honourable... Order! Now, members of the government bench, is someone will be leaving the House also, if there's not a little more respect and discipline. The Honourable Trevor Mallard, point of... I'll, I'll come back. Uh, Colin King, supplementary question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister of Education. Did the briefing to the incoming Minister of Education endorse the government's moves to ensure that parents receive information on their child's progress in plain language? Honourable Anne Tully. Mr Speaker, the briefing stated, quote, clear reporting of assessment information also promotes transparency within the education system and assists parents to monitor their children's progress, end quote. The Ministry was recognising, as this government has, that parents need plain language reports on how their children are progressing and what they can do to help. In which year will most students who were in year one in 2004 sit NCA level two? The Honourable Anne Tully. Uh, Mr Speaker, most students sit NCA level two in years either, either years 11 or 12. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Will those students who will be sitting level two in 2015 have the advantage of the professional development that was introduced in 2004 for their entire school career, and why did she, and why did she not accelerate that professional development to ensure that all kids could have it rather than take the standards approach? The Honourable Anne Tully. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm advised that the cost of the Literacy Professional Development Programme were extremely high and the, required, and, and the required experience is not available on a national start. In fact, the costs of that project were so high that even in the best of times that the previous government enjoyed, they didn't roll that project out right across the sector. They, they couldn't do it with all the money that they had. So the Ministry are, is currently looking at the evidence from that project and that will inform us as we roll out support around our national standards. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. I seek leave to table a document which shows that by 2008, 44% of primary and intermediate student uh, order. teachers had, had that order. Trainer. What's the source of this document? Uh, it's a briefing to the incoming Minister. Uh, but, but that's publicly available. Order. Order. A point of order is being considered. I mean, I've ruled out the uh, leave tabling documents that are c currently available. I mean, that's one to the, the, the current incoming minister. I'm, I'm, order. Question number eight, the Honourable Tohanere. 